let's drill down into these individual stocks and start off with Paul's number one luxury goods company, Apple, which sells consumer electronics, computer software, and personal computers. Right, so we have the announcement out tomorrow about the iPhone 7, and people like me who are invested in the stock are hoping that the phone looks way different to the iPhone 6, so that everyone can tell, because it's no good they bring out a new phone and people can't you tell that you've a got the new one. And they can't tell that you've actually uh, <laughs> So like the 6 was different model. to the 5, the 7 needs to look different to the 6, sufficiently different, but I think it will. It's going to have a screen that extends from top to bottom, you know, without the black bit at the tops. They've obviously done their research in that Tehran <laughs> household. Market cap we're sitting with $580 billion, PE of 12.6 dividend yield here of just over 2%. Anthea, we're stretching it, we've already <laughs> said so, but uh, give me your thoughts well, on, on in Apple. In Paul's defense, how many technology companies do you know that can put out a product every year, slightly upgraded, and charge more for it? So in that respect, maybe it is a luxury goods company, right? Um, I do like Apple for many reasons. It has had quite a hard time of late, you know. I think people are worried that it's a one-trick pony. Mm. You know, uh, iPad, watches, not really a replacement for the phone. Mm -hmm. And so there's a concern about that. But I think we can't ignore the services revenue, though, mm. and brand loyalty. And maybe that plays into the luxury goods hands as well, the brand loyalty. Um, so service revenue up 20% year on year. So that's like Elaborate iTunes on the service revenue. So, so that's your iTunes. Um, and Apple they, they Music haven't generally buying apps. Yeah. And they haven't quite got into cloud computing the way maybe a Google or an Amazon has. But they're doing okay, in my opinion. Mm. Well, we've got this one in the international portfolio. Yes, and we've gotten into them, I forget exactly where, like at the 105 type of level. The share chart will come up while we're talking. You can see that it really peaks at 130. It's had a couple of forays there, then it sagged quite badly. I think the core concern is exactly this, is whether or not they're going to be able to really sell a significant number of phones at the same kind of margins. And what Has the future the watch holds. been disappointing? Because you know, there was a lot made about the, the launch of the Apple Watch. When we discussed this recently with Rowan Williams, he was saying it has been disappointing. A lot of people don't actually wear them and that the, they don't, the battery charge doesn't last. But you know that they've sold millions of them. So by everyone else's standards in the consumer this electronics, it's been, been a huge, huge success. success. But for Apple, given the fact that they regularly sell between 40 and 70 million iPhones every quarter, it's potentially a bit of a disappointment. But I think it's going to be better. The new versions probably have a GPS chip and so on and so forth. Discovery sells a lot of Apple Watches. They do, and mm. Paul is clearly hot on Apple. Anthea, can you give us your call? I'm hot on Apple as well. I Look, what like I'm really stuff. hoping is that the following is going to happen over the forthcoming months. The iPhone 7 is going to be announced tomorrow, and there'll be upgrades to the MacBooks and to the iPads, as there usually are different pricing points and then the sales will just be eye-popping. But we're going to have to wait until January next year until you get the reports on what the sales but have actually been. But we are patient investors. We're not going anywhere, and we're going to be holding Apple for the long term anyway. Absolutely. And the long, long term could also, of course, include Apple making uh, further steps into manufacturing other devices, like, for example, motor cars. I know I'm throwing this in late at the end of the yeah. conversation. They need to hire you for their <laughs> blue sky thinking. You know, the ideal case, from my point of view, would be if Apple were to buy into the electric car business like by buying Tesla, but that's a bit of a mad... It's quite know, a stretch. It is a, little, a, stretch. a little bit of a stretch. A little bit of a stretch. stretch. <laughs> they've, they've I don't got think they set up the intention <laughs> to, to buy Tesla. They've got enormous cash. Look, we've only got four stocks today, so can I ask, what do yes, you think you about can. this furore in Europe with regard to Apple and the taxes in Ireland? So it's a worry. I, it, it, it is, it's a bit of a concern, you know, um, but I, I'm not too worried about it. So the fine was, what, 5% of their cash pile? Yeah, they've got like $214 billion, and this is like 13 or 14. Exactly. Mm. So I'm not too worried so about it. So relatively speaking, the magnitude you don't feel is going it's to huge. impact. I, the you know what's a worry about it, though, is that going forward, the other companies that are under investigation might get slapped with big fines as well. In Europe. Yep. Do you think the size is a concern or not a concern? It's a, look, it's a big speaking. sum of money. It's relatively not a concern. And also the Irish government is appealing. It's a bizarre situation where the party, the government that's going to receive the tax revenues, is saying they don't agree that that should be raised. Any event. Is it creating uncertainty? Have we seen some pullback on it the stock sort of as a result? It was sort of anticipated in the numbers. So it, it hasn't caused a significant sell-off, but obviously it's not a net positive. Right. But we both, you both hot. Well, on Apple. I'm certainly hot. No, I've Anthea. asked Anthea. I am certainly she hot came on in Apple hot. as well. Excellent. Right. <laughs>